May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Shabbat Shalom. Yeshua and the disciples were gathered at the Passover Seder table. Yeshua had just revealed to his disciples that one of them was going to betray him. Five minutes later, John, his beloved, comes up to him and says, Is it me, Jesus? Is it me, Jesus? And Yeshua says, No, John, it's not you. 20 minutes later, Peter comes up, says, Yeshua, surely it's not me. It's, it's not me, is it? Yeshua says, No, Peter, it's not you. 45 minutes later, Judas comes up to Yeshua and says, Is it me, Jesus? Is it me, Jesus? And Jesus replied, Is it me, Jesus? Is it me, Jesus? <laughs> <clears throat> This morning's story portion <laughs> is Parshat Re'eh. Re'eh means to see. It's translated as either see or behold. It's, it's an imperative kind of, kind of behold. It's a visionary word. It looks to the future. It's the root of the word Yireh. Has anybody heard of the word Yireh before? Yireh? All right, fine. If I pronounce it gyra, would you know then? Yeah, of course. Adonai yireh. The Lord will see to it or provide. And so we say, Jehovah Jira, my provider, he will provide everything. The yod in front of the root from re'eh, implies the imperfect tense, which means he will see to it. That's why we call him God the provider. Now in this portion of Re'e, Moses is beginning the body of his message to the children of Israel. Um, anyone know where the word Deuteronomy comes from? Anyone? It means, no, it means, it, it's a Greek word. Deutero meaning second. Nomo or nomos meaning law. This is the second law. It's the second giving of the law. It's the second time the law was given. Of course, because the first time it was given, at this point, all those folks, gone. 40 years in the wilderness, we'll do that. That entire generation, it was gone. And so now he's giving it again. And he's trying to give them a vision as to what's coming up for them. He starts by reminding them of a few basic facts, and we've talked about these in the past, so we don't need to um, really go into detail, but let's take a brief look. Um, starting with Shabbat Nachamu, which was two weeks ago, um, and we talked about comfort, and we talked about there's no doubt that life has its trials. Storms will come to each one of us, that's a guarantee, and yet life goes on. This is, this is one of the things that, that Moses was reminding the children of Israel of. See, look, you know, you're going to have trials, but persevere. Persevere through them. Keep your faith. Everything's going to be okay. Life will continue no matter how bad things get. I was reminded of this fact not too long ago. One morning, I got up, and I took a look at my fish tank. Have you ever just, if you, if you, if you have fish, have you ever just gotten up, and you look at your fish tank, and you're like, mm. And you just know you just let it go way too long. Well, that was the case. And I have one of those big long siphon things where you like attach it to your, 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 your sink. You let the water run and it, it sucks everything out from the bottom and all that kind of stuff. So I was getting, I was getting ready to use it. And I, I took a look before I actually did it. And there, stuck to the side of the, the tank, on the inside, on the outside would be gross. <laughs> but on the inside was a, a bunch of fish eggs. I was like, how could that possibly be? This tank is nasty. Well, apparently, the fish didn't have as much of a problem with it as I did. Because there they were. 
it just it amazed me how that even though the tank was really nasty and, and the environment was horrible and the conditions were really bad, life continued to go on. That's something that we need to realize, that even though our tanks might be yucky and in need of some real cleaning, life is going to prevail. God will give us everything that we need for us to survive. In other words, Adonai, Yireh, he provides. We've talked about the fact that it's not what we do that makes us great. Nor is it our own strength that causes us to succeed at anything. We have nothing to do with it. It is the fact that God is near to us that makes us great. This is another key point. Moses is trying to remind the children of Israel. They're getting ready to go into the promised land. And they need to remember these things. The statutes and the judgments are given to us to make us wise and understanding, but not great. Not great. And not successful. God does that. Greatness comes from God alone. And we saw that the concept of doing things for God because of what he did for us is a Torah concept. He does for us, therefore... We do for him. It's a love relationship. It's a love relationship. This is a point he is trying to get the children of Israel to realize. It's a love relationship. The concept of doing because of what was done for us is not new. It's not a New Testament concept. And last week, we talked about this word, ekev. Ekev. It means because. And we talked about faith. Despite the fact that the Beatles will tell us love is all we need, it's our love for God that is specifically expressed through faith that we need. The fact is that because what we do doesn't make us great, because our greatness is God's nearness to us, and because he chose us and not the other way around, there's nothing that can make God stop loving us. Nothing we can do to make God stop loving us. Therefore, we no longer have to be afraid of failure, so there's no reason left not to try. God will love us even when we fail. And so here are the children of Israel. They're on the east bank of the Jordan, just waiting to jump over and take possession of the land that God had promised to them. But before they go in, Moses just wants them to know this fact. You are great. You are great. But it's because God is with you. God loves you. He chose you above all other nations. Not because you are great. Not because of anything that you did. Not because of who you are even, but because of who God is. Nothing will change that. And if you ever do anything else in your lives, God's love for you will never change. This is the message Moses is trying to provide. And it's the message God wants us to realize at our heart. For all of us. But they were called to so much more. We could simply just love God. And that would be okay. But God calls us to so much more. This portion this morning says you can be great. Or you can be great and show other people how great they can be too. You have so much that God wants to do through you. Now, at this point, I want you to start shifting your thinking a little bit because this is what Moses is saying to the children of Israel. There is so much more God has for you to do, but he's also saying this to you right now. There is so much more that God has for you 
to do. He has so much he wants to do through you. So many people he wants to touch through you and through your lives. That if you just do what he tells you to do, we'll become a separate people. We'll become a light to every other nation. And God says to the children of Israel, you do that, they will become my people too. Show them. You show them who I am. You show them.